Всем привет, окей, винар, today you guys, we're gonna be looking at the Steam Awards, so we're gonna start off with the game of the year, um, which is obviously just, of all the games published through 2022, which has been the most influential, or the most popular, or the best, essentially, um, in your opinion, and that's gotta go to Elden Ring, um, I remember time and time again, it's between Elden Ring and God of War, MW, um, uh, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 2, is it, just came out recently, and, I haven't been playing that one. Um, I did originally play the Modern Warfare series on PlayStation 3 back in the day. Dying Light, obviously, I didn't even know there was a second game out. And Stray's a good game. I've heard it from my mates, but Elden Ring definitely um, wins it for me. The VR game of the year, I haven't been on my VR a lot. Um, <laughs> inside the back rooms. Uh, these two, I would not put them as most popular. Hitman looks pretty good. Bone Lab is probably the best. Bone Lab has been. An amazing, um, as an amazing sort of influence over the VR market. So I think Hitman has also been a pretty cool, interesting game. I definitely need to hop back on my VR. Among Us, obviously, it's just a popular game, but Bone Lab wins it for me. For the Labor of Love, so this is the award that goes to essentially um, the best debut or creative baby, but also the good parents of the devs as they continue to support their creation. Okay, the game that is not necessarily the newest, but it's been out for a while and therefore, you know, been constantly updated and, and made better. Cyberpunk does not win it for me. Cyberpunk was a shit release. They've made tiny updates in terms of optimization, uh, making the you know game run better to how it was originally supposed to be published, but doesn't do it justice. No Man's Sky has actually made a shit ton of progress from its original, um, it's an original sort of um, beginnings. Not a lot of people know, but No Man's Sky came out and it was, was, was a bit of a scam. However, it has changed drastically. I've been playing it a little bit and it yeah has changed a lot. And Deep Rock Galactic, Zomboid, I've ne oh, Zomboid, never heard of this. Dota 2, I do know, obviously, that's a mobile like LOL. Um, but No Man's Sky actually does, should deserve the win here. It was a fucking um, crazy release and I heard lots, a, lot, a lot about it, but it is an amazing game now. Um, better with friends, so essentially the game, which is, you know, Absolutely amazing when paired together with a friend. I think The Forest is a classic sort of example of what this game should be like. Um, the Multiverse Season 2, is this, I'm not exactly sure, this is some sort of like uh, Smash sort of game. A Monsters Rise, Ready or Not, I've never seen this. COD, obviously, is always just better with a friend. And Raft is a banger. I've got to put probably, I mean, COD, it's between COD and Raft, probably Raft. Um, but I've never really played any of these games intensely. Outstanding visual style. Bendy the Dark Revival. Oh, I've seen the original of this game. I didn't. I, I haven't seen the 22, 2022 release, which is sort of the newer one. But the Bendy, I remember the old Bendy. This is like a, a bit of a horror game. Um, Scorn. Interesting graphics. Cult of the Lamb, all sort of horror, sort of, oh, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, which is the Spider-Man game, holy shit, and Kenya, um, Kenna, uh, British Spirits, I haven't been playing this one, I, I saw, um, I think Pewds played this, but whatever it was, um, I think it's gonna go to Bendy, Bendy's always just been a, a fucking fave of mine, it's got that sort of like, um, uh, what's it, well, like that cup, cuphead sort of style, uh, original sort of um, art twist to it, which I've I've always really liked. Most innovative gameplay. So this is obviously the um this has got to go to Stray. Fucking hands down, that's Stray. Um, so the design of this game being frontline and creative experimentation, just bringing new ideas into the game market and and bringing stuff that hasn't really been done before. And Stray was amazing at cultivating that and um an amazing game overall. Um, the best game that you suck at. So this is a game that rewards persistence and not faint of hearts, the toughest game we've loved. Elden Ring surely is going to be the best game that you suck at, right? Like, that's just the absolute fucking classic. FIFA 23, dog shit game. Victoria um, is a classic, but I never really got into it. Total Warhammer, again, a classic, and get the fuck out. Not exactly sure, I haven't played this one too much. These two are quite classics, but Elden Ring has got to be. It's, like, known for its difficulty, and it's the very last of its series, I'm pretty sure, so... Um, or oh, not the Lost of a series, I don't know. It's like fucking Dark Souls 3 where it's just insanely difficult. Elden Ring has got to hold that W. Best soundtrack. Um, let me think about this for a second. I've only played this and this. I haven't played the other two. Um, the Final Fantasy soundtrack's always been banging. Um, 
so it's going to go to Final Fantasy. I'm not super, I don't really remember that well what the audio was like, but uh, again, these I've never fucking heard of this or seen these before, but yep. Outstanding story rich gameplay. Um, so the only narrative heavy game will hit the spots essentially that packs the most wallop soap opera like a TV screenplay. The Stanley Parable, oh my god, I watched Lex Friedman play this amazing game. God of War has great um, sort of um, narrative. Uncharted, again, a classic um, narrative. I did watch, I think Jack Septicar played this one. Spider Man, a bit of a, sh a shit one. I do not like Marvel at all. Uh, it's between Uncharted and Stanley Parable. It's probably got to go to Stanley Parable, probably, because I'm just most not. I mean, nostalgic, uh, because I watched Lex Friedman play, and it was just such an enjoyable experience, and very um, innovative and smart in the way that, you know, you could take way more than a million different approaches, and it always had some witty and, and sort of interesting and unique experience every time you play. You could play a game three times and, and, and you know, and still play again. 2022 Sit Back and Relaxes game. Um, I'm not one that really plays sit back and relax this game. I don't know any of these, to be honest. That looks cool. Have I seen any of people play these? I don't think so. Um, that looks like a, such a sick game. I'm just going to vote this. I really, I'm not too aware about this. Um, I, I generally like giving it to the more niche ones, but this one just looks like a shit ton of fun. And I get, get nostalgic back to playing on my Wii with my brother back in the day playing on the fucking very very old lego star wars that was an amazing game absolute classic best game on the go this game was so good you had to take it everywhere um again i'm not one that really plays um games on the go unless it's the switch at an airbnb on the night out after fucking hungover playing some mario party master jewel Yu Gi Oh, vampire survivors death stranding director's cut potato or snap um Wow, I know Potato actually had quite the, um, quite an overwhelmingly positive fucking, uh, sort of influence over the market, so I'm gonna go with that one, because I know that was a classic, but, uh, yeah, those are all my, um, votes for the, um, different Steam Awards, let me know what your opinions are about the different Steam Awards, let me know if you guys agree with me, disagree with me, uh, whatever you think, I just want your opinions about this sort of thing, so, um, yeah, guys, take care. Uh, please, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, uh, subscribe. <laughs> Thank you.